all of you. Uh, this uh, Committee on uh, Enterprise-Based Education and Training to Employment Act is now uh, called to order. Uh, let me uh, first of all thank our good chair, Senator Chis Escudero, for uh, giving us the uh, opportunity to uh, lead this uh, subcommittee. And before we start, may I just uh, place into the record and acknowledge the presence of uh, our colleague, the uh, chairperson of the Senate Committee on uh, Basic Education and the chairman of the Education Commission too, no other than Senator Sherwin Gachalian. Thank you, Your Honors, for uh, being here. I also would like to acknowledge is uh, on his way, uh, Senator Rafi Tulfo, who also who will also join us in uh, today's uh, hearing. Let me also acknowledge our uh, resource persons present here today. We have with us from uh, TESDA, we have DDG, Deputy Director General for Special Concerns, DDG Vidal Villanueva III, sir. We also have with us Director Floramel Joy Song Song, the uh, Executive Director, OIC uh, of uh, the Partnerships and Linkages Office. You also have with us Chief TASD Specialist, uh, PLO, Attorney Clefford Pasqual. And uh, from again, from TESDA Chief TASD Specialist, Ms. Maria Linda Andrade. Ayun, si Linda pala yun. Uh, we also have with us a representative from the Department of Labor and Employment, Yusek Carmela Torres. Um, good uh, afternoon. We also have with us from Dole Chief Rosalinda Pineda from the Bureau of uh, Local Employment. Unfortunately, we, we, we don't have with us the uh, representative of... Uh, the the employers uh, and the employees uh, because of uh, COVID yata, I'm not sure kung ano and uh, I, I just wish that they were able to send the representative no hindi man sila but we will we will definitely uh, coordinate with them unfortunately there's no representative right now but uh, we will uh, uh, coordinate with them. Also with us is uh, the uh, Chief Legal Officer of Second Congressional Commission, Attorney Joseph Noel Estrada. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, we acknowledge uh, Senator uh, Rafi Tulfo is also here with us. May I just uh, give a very short opening statement? Uh, una, mapagpalang uh, tanghali pong muli sa atin lahat. Alam niyo po, itong uh, araw na ito ay special sa atin dahil... Uh, Yung tatalakayin po natin ay isa sa mga advokasya na malapit sa puso natin, malapit sa puso ng mga educators. Uh, just a few days ago, we were talking about this in the Education Commission too, and that's why uh, I'm happy that our chairman, Senator Win Gachalian, is uh, also joining us. Ito po yung pagpapalawig ng mga oportunidad para sa enterprise-based education and uh, training. Kasama po sa tatalakayin ng ating panukalang batas, uh, ang mga panukalang batas gaya ng Senate Bill Number no. 363 at House Bill Number no. 7400. You know, when TESDA formulated the uh, NTESDP 2018-2022 o yung National Technical Education and Skills Development Plan, the agency set an ambitious target to increase the percentage of uh, learners taking uh, enterprise-based training from 4% in 2016, ang tinarget sa 2022 ay 40%. However, by the end of 2022, we are still far from such targets. With enrollees and graduates reaching only 209,975 or 16.66% of all TVET learners and 190,979 or 15. 51% respectively. The number of Tibet, uh, uh, number of enterprise-based and education training providers also remain uh, very low. Prior to the pandemic in 2019, we already have 983 providers. In 2022, we only had 830. 
Ngayong August of 2023, mas mababa pa po, 684 providers. Kaya this is such a uh, concern and this is really unfortunate considering that when you talk about enterprise-based education and training, it has proven to be a uh, reliable uh, bridge connecting our trainees to employment. In fact, dun po sa 2021 study ng employment of 2020 TVET graduates by TESDA, the three highest employment outcomes came from enterprise-based training modalities. Under dual training system, 100% na e-empleo yung graduates ng dual training system. 100% din of the graduates were absorbed by the enterprise after their training. Yung susunod po, learnership program, 90.20%. Meanwhile, yung in-company modality graduates were hired after their in-company arrangement, 89.67%. Kaya po, mahalaga na sa pagdinig natin ngayong araw na ito, ay marinig po natin kung ano yung mga po pwede natin gawin mula sa ating mga resource persons, what we could do to improve um these numbers, how we can uh, improve the existing legal framework ng enterprise-based education training to maximize its potential. May mga questions po no? uh, during the Education Commission too, like tama po ba ang distribution natin sa ating uh, scholarship at support mechanisms para sa iba't ibang modes ng pag-deliver ng TVET courses. Dun sa mga nakausap natin ng mga industry, they were still requesting dahil they see that there's a big, big opportunity in their industries. Sapat po ba yung enterprise-based uh, education and training ng mga trainers natin at assessors? That's a different story naman. Yung sistema po ba ng pagrehistro ng mga programa at pagbibigay ng in uh, incentives sa ating mga enterprises, malinaw po ba at uh, madali? Yung mga industry partners natin, sabi, pagpunta nila dun sa BIR, sabi ng BIR, ah, hindi namin alam pa paano compute in yan eh. Paano namin ko compute in yung uh, tax uh, breaks o benefits na binibigay sa inyo? Kung yung BIR hindi nakakaalam, paano pang may enganyo yung mga enterprises? no Paano ba natin mapuprotektahan yung TVET learners upang ma-maximize nila yung kanilang enterprise-based uh, education and training. So, ito lang po yung ilan sa mga tanong na nais nating uh, bigyan tugon ngayong araw na ito. And we hope to explore in today's uh, hearing uh, the concerns of our colleagues, our uh, our uh, friends from other sectors, and uh, we look forward to enriching discussion for today's hearing. Maraming salamat and uh, may God bless us all. Uh, may I uh, invite our uh, colleague, Senator Win. Senator Rutulfo. Senator Wynn, our chairman of the uh, Education Commission, too, is recognized. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a short opening remarks. Uh, I do support the uh, passage of this bill uh, because uh, statistics will bear out that there's only 4% of all the uh, scholarship and training programs of TESDA is channeled to enterprise-based training. And just to put it simply, enterprise-based training is a form of apprenticeship uh, for our trainees in which they at the same time learn uh, learn the actual and the practicality of the company that they are employed in and at the same time they learn new skills they learn new knowledge in order to do it uh, to be more efficient and to be knowledgeable in that uh, uh, employment so uh, it's important that we expand this program mr chairman and it's important also that uh, we channel more funds as well as uh, encourage more companies to join into the EBT program. And uh, the, the bill also specified some incentives, and that is a way for companies to be enticed to join into uh, the EBT program. Uh, the EBT program is not new. It's just uh, it's not being maximized and corporations are not attracted to join this program. But I feel that this is really... Uh, one of the more important or probably the most important programs under TESDA that we should expand in order to create more jobs and highly skilled workers. No? So thank you very much, Mr. Chairman.
Thank you, Chairman uh, Sherwin Gachalian of uh, the Education Commission and the Senate Committee uh, Chair of uh, Basic uh, Education. We now uh, recognize our dear colleague, Senator Rafi Tulfo. Sir, you recognize. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Majority Floor Leader, Senator Joel Villanueva, Senator Wynne Gachalian. Good morning to all our distinguished guests and resource persons. <clears throat> Isang kalapatan pang tao po ang pagkakaroon ng trabaho. Mr. Chair, ang trabaho ay pinanggagalingan ng dignidad at respeto ng isang tao. Samantalang taong walang trabaho ay miserable. Work goes into the very core of what makes us decent people. And so, here in the Senate, pursuant to our constitutional mandate, we continue to find ways to equip our people with the right tools toward being effective members of the workforce. In academic year 2016 to 2017, the Department of Education began to implement the K-12 Senior High School Manual of Operations. <laughs> this is the aspect of the K-12 program where the senior high school graduates are given education and training sufficient for four potential exit points. Number one, employment. Number two, entrepreneurship. Number three, middle level skills development. And number four, higher education. So much research, study, public funds, and hard work went into the implementation of the K-12 program. And while some are getting impatient on the promised results of employment opportunity for our senior high school graduates, I believe that we should first try to support what has been started instead of having a knee-jerk reaction of abruptly terminating its implementation. Para matulungan po ang K-12 program, kailangan po natin munang aminin sa ating mga sarili ang problemang kinakaharap po nito. Sa totoo po, hirap po makapasok sa trabaho ang ating mga senior high graduates. We promise them employability in a level above that of the usual high school graduate because the senior high program is supposed to provide them with skills in education that would meet the needs of the industry. Unfortunately, if you look at the job ads here in the Philippines, even government ads, the priority is still the hiring of college graduates. There is discrimination of K-12 senior high graduates contrary to the spirit and wisdom of the existing law. Companies hiring K-12 graduates are predominantly from sectors such as construction, food and beverage services, BPO, and food processing. According to a study conducted by the Philippine Business for Education, only about 20% of 70 leading companies across all sectors in the country were inclined to hire senior high graduates. The problem is that there is a disconnect between our educational curriculum, particularly in senior high, and actual industry needs which may be addressed through enterprise-based training program, which is what the present bill is all about. But I propose that the enterprise-based training program must be integrated as early as in the senior high curriculum. This makes senior high graduates job ready. Our senior high students must have already an apprenticeship program that will count as experience for them to immediately enter the workforce after graduation. Akin pong suggestion, Mr. Chair, tulad po ng ginagawa pag, uh, sa mga college courses sa last um, semester ng uh, senior high, sila po ay pupunta sa isang tinatawag na on-the-job training sa company o sa field na gusto nilang papasukin. And after makapagbuo sila ng kanilang several hours required, then when they graduate, sila po ay meron na agad trabaho sapagkat sila po ay nasanay na doon sa kumpanya na kung saan sila nag-on-the-job training, na alam na nila yung mga pasikot-sikot doon. And siguro po, doon sa mga company na mag-hire doon sa mga graduate ng senior high, bibigyan na incentive. Instead na sa present Bill that we have suggesting 75%, makatipid ng 25% ang employer, ang aking pong suggestion, full 
pay. Kasi nga po, nakapag-OJT na sila during their uh, uh, senior high last SEM. So dapat, full pay na po sila kasi inasahan po ng mga magulang yan dahil after makapag-graduate high school, yun ang iniisip ng mga parents na makapagtrabaho at makatulong. So full pay with all the benefits. Then upon graduation, they should be able to continue their training program, but compensation should no longer be limited to 75% of the minimum wage. There must be a mechanism so that the EBIT program will not be abused to circumvent security of tenure and the workers' right to proper and reasonable wages. Hindi dapat ito magamit na parang kapalit ng in-endo scheme ng mga kumpanya. We must clarify the labor standards of the EBIT program. And to further encourage employment of senior high graduates and the implementation of this EBIT program, we may provide more than just tax incentives. We could also provide recognition awards to participating enterprises and incentives from LGUs for hiring local senior high graduates. Mr. Chair, I fully support this bill dahil ang batas na makapagbibigay ng trabaho at makatarungan na sweldo sa ating mga kababayan ay pangmatagalan ng solusyon sa napakaraming problema na kinakaharap nila sa araw-araw. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will reserve my questions regarding this bill later. Thank you, Senator Tulfo. Again, uh, let me reiterate what my uh, two colleagues uh, emphasized today uh, before we start the hearing. The uh, chairperson of EDGO made uh, a statement about the importance of enterprise-based education and training. We have seen its successes uh, in the past, but uh, unfortunately, we have yet to encourage our uh, enterprises to join and participate and uh, there's something uh, wrong about it but on the other hand there is also the concern a valid concern uh, raised by our distinguished colleague senator tulfo that this particular program can be subject to abuse which is true uh, it had happened before and uh, we don't want to to make the same mistakes again by uh, by uh, continuously hiring enterprise-based training and education when they are already have uh, mastered the uh, program and yet they are still getting uh, below minimum wage. So that is the uh, challenge to all of us, uh, especially in ensuring that we, if we're going to pass such a measure like this, we have to make sure that uh, all the safety nets are in place and at the end of the day, we'll be able to protect our learners and our would-be potential uh, workers. Also, uh, it's also a, 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 a thing to, uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, entertain the, uh, the idea of somehow um, um, uh, synchronizing the programs of K-12, to as mentioned by Senator Tulfo, with the participation already of uh, enterprises. Um, because in the uh, present situation, uh, when you talk about enterprise base, before they, they actually get into the program, they must be at least high school graduate, if I'm not mistaken, no? or at least pass an assessment uh, assessment test being required by the enterprises. So we we'll look into that and uh, discuss further. Perhaps we can uh, ask uh, probably the representative of test the first and then Dole and then uh, Edcom before we ask questions. Uh, the DG uh, Villanueva, who is, uh, I'm not sure if he is my uh, cousin or we are related, but uh, probably in the in the uh, lolo ng mga lolo ng mga lolo. Sige po, uh, DDG Vidal, you're recognized, sir. Good afternoon po, Mr. Chairman. To our beloved Senator Joel Villanueva, the one and only test the man. To Senator Win Gachalian, the chairman of IDCOM 2, the Senate, and the chairman of the Basic Education. To the idol ng bayan, Senator Rafi Tolfo, let me also acknowledge uh, Mr. Chairman, the Undersecretary of Dolly, Yusek Ami Torres, to all guests and um, participants for this afternoon's um, deliberation. Mr. Chair, TESDA fully supports the passage of this proposed bill as it is supportive of the priority of the agency to intensify the implementation of enterprise-based training through the increase and deeper industry and enterprise participation in TVET.
Strengthening the EBT is the part of identified strategies of the National Technical Education and Skills Development Plan or in TSDP for the fifth cycle 2018 to 20, um, 2022 to 2028. Also, it is aligned with the recommendation of 2021 ASEAN Development Bank TVET sector study, technical and vocational and training in the Philippines in the age of industry 4.0, which emphasized the need to greater industry involvement to meet the rapidly changing industry demands. The enterprise-based and education training is consistently found to result in a higher employment rate among the graduates compared to other training modality or delivery modes, according to the study on the employment of TVET graduates or SETG. In 2021, only 5.27% of TVET graduates were trained under EBT. Results of the cost-benefit study on the dual training system showed that the benefit outweighed the cost of training for the firm, both in short and long terms. This is empirical basis that TESDA is capitalizing to stimulate more commitment of the enterprises to expand their participation in DTS, EBT, and apprenticeship in general through the recognition of industry boards, implementation of EBT to the maximum level, among others. With this, Mr. Um, Chairman, um, we express our thanks and gratitude to the good chairman for really advocating for the entire TVET sector in the country. Thank you so much and mayong hapon ka natong tanan. Nagang salamat, DG Villanueva. Uh, let me also put into the records that uh, here in the Senate, yung apprenticeship bill is being uh, sponsored now by uh, Senator Jingoy Estrada on the floor. And of course, that's just part of the bigger uh, pie here that we're talking about, which is the enterprise-based education and training. Na again, uh, nakikita natin na uh, isa sa pinakamatibay, pinakaepektibo na modality para makakuha ng maganda at decenting trabaho ang ating mga kababayan. We give the floor now to the representative of uh, Dole, ma'am, uh, Yuseka Torres. You're recognized, please. Thank you very much. Uh... Mr. Chair, uh, Your Honor, Senator Joel Villanueva, Senator Wynne Gachalian, Senator Rafi Tulfo, DDG Villanueva of TESDA and senior officials present, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat for and in consideration of Senate Bill 363 and the House Bill number 74, 7400 or strengthening the enterprise-based education and training Please allow the Department of Labor and Employment to provide our views and recommendations. Let me commend the legislators. As the bills are geared towards increasing the income ability of the workforce, which are key outcomes of the Philippine Development Plan, the Labor and Employment Plan 2023 to 2028, and the National Technical Education and Skills Development Plan for 2023 to 2028. There are two specific outcomes in these plans which are increasing the employability of the workforce and expanding access to employment and work opportunities. Under the LEP or the Labor and Employment Plan, the outcome on increasing the employability of the workforce will pursue specific strategies and in line with the proposed bills. One is aligning development objectives for basic higher education TVET and professional education based on labor requirements. And second is develop modern and responsive TVET apprenticeships, basic and higher education and professional development interventions. Under the same plan, specific outputs and targets have been identified, which includes targets for the enterprise-based training for apprenticeship and dual training. These are contained in a results matrix which have been discussed and approved by our tripartite constituents, the labor, the employers, and the government, and the targets have been identified. There is an oversight tripartite committee which will assess and monitor the plan's implementation. Likewise, the bills complement and align with the Trabajo para Sabayan Act, the Employment Master Plan, which has recently 
signed into law with the key objectives of improving the employability and competitiveness of the Filipino workers. The IRR are currently being developed with Dole as co-chair with NEDA and DTI. These bills are timely and relevant and consistent with the country's strategic direction on increasing the employability of the workforce. By incorporating apprenticeship and dual training, this allows for a market-driven TVET, which meets the requirements of industries and through a comprehensive industry-based approach. Ten key employment generators under the Labor and Employment Plan have been identified. These sectors or industries are expected to generate the needed employment in the country for the next five years. These sectors include ITBPM, creative industries, transportation, manufacturing, construction, tourism, education, and health. The Dole has been collaborating with industry associations which have drawn their respective roadmaps in identifying critical and in-demand skills for the next few years. Further, enterprises classified under these industry sectors are good basis for organizing apprenticeships, dual training, and or enterprise-based training programs to develop a pool of needed talents and professionals. Apprenticeships for the youth allows for a seamless transition from school to work. Focus on the youth is essential given the current youth unemployment rate, which is 13%, according to PSA September 2023 figures. Graduates from K-12 or senior high schools must be given the opportunity to find decent and quality jobs and the opportunity to enhance their skills and competencies through apprenticeships, enterprise-based training, or youth employability programs. A job street survey of senior high school reported in 2023 that they which showed an increased awareness and willingness in the number of companies to hire senior high schools at 57.7 percent before it was just 24 percent based on the labor force survey of 2023 september current employment rate is 95 95.5 percent unemployment at 4.5 percent and underemployment at 10.7 percent. Job skills mismatch still continue, but the gap has been slowly reduced. There are strategies and measures implemented to address some of this mismatch. Dole has been implementing the youth employability programs like special program for the employment of students. The government internship program and Job Start are forms of apprenticeship internships which can assist the youth transition from school to work. Partnerships have been drawn with the private sector. Some good examples are with McDonald's, with SM Incorporated and Iboitis. The apprenticeships for adults are viable options for meeting the growing needs for upskilling and reskilling and with emerging technologies in the digital green and care economies. Accordingly, we kindly recommend to include the definition of apprenticeship and dual training for this leg legislative agenda as a standard reference. We also highly recommend the incorporation of the Philippine Qualifications Framework and the Philippine Skills Framework's provisions and standards in training regulations to ensure industrial transformation that is sustained by responsive human capital and skills development strategies. Employers, industry organizations, and educational institutions may engage in skills occupations mapping of skills inadequacy and proposed measures. Moreover, we support incentivizing the enterprises that are participating in enterprise-based training programs. This can encourage more enterprise participation and involvement in high-quality TVET and shaping globally-oriented human resources. Your Honours, may we recommend that the provisions of the bill be reviewed further in the light of Senate Bill 1083 by Senator Jingoy Estrada and company entitled an act reforming the national apprenticeships and align the provisions of this bill for tighter complementation. Finally, 
a bill on strengthening enterprise-based training, education and training has been identified as a priority bill of the Labor and Employment Plan 2023 to 2028. Thank you, Your Honors, for the opportunity to contribute to our comments on the enterprise-based education and training bills. Thank you very much, Ayusek Torres. Let me uh, also put into the records that uh, it is this Congress that uh, passed the Trabajo para Sabayan Law. Um, di ko alam sinong author at sponsor nun, but I'm sure co-author and co-sponsor si Senator Rafi at Senator Wynne Gachelian. So it's a very good law. And uh, I would just like to point out, kasi I, I, I saw something there, yung incorporation of PQF. This, is, this representation is also the... Uh, uh, principal author and sponsor of the Philippine Qualifications Framework. It's supposed to be incorporated. Let me put that on record. It's supposed to be incorporated Ted, because there are supposed to be level descriptors doon sa PQF. But unfortunately, the past four years, apat na beses lang nag-meeting yung PQF NCC. Uh, buti na lang yung administrasyon na to, nagmi-meeting na po sila. Uh, before we ask questions, and I, uh, with the indulgence of my colleagues, last to uh, make a statement is our dear friend from the Education Commission, our Chief Legal Officer of EDCOM 2, Attorney uh, Joseph Noel Estrada. Sir, you're recognized. Maraming salamat po. Magandang hapon po, Senator Joel Villanueva, the Chairman of the sub Subcommittee and also one of our commissioners in the Second Congressional Commission on Education. Good afternoon din po, Senator Wynne Gachalian. Also our chairman in the Second Congressional Commission on Education, or EDCOM 2. And of course, to Senator Rafi Tulfo, whom I had the privilege to meet last week personally. Magandang hapon po sa inyo. So, on behalf of the EDCOM 2, we'd like to manifest that enterprise-based training, or EBT, constitutes a key, pri key priority for EDCOM Two, within the purview of the Standing Committee on Technical Vocational Education and Training and Lifelong Learning. And this aligns seamlessly with the recommendations set forth by EDCOM 1 to reform apprenticeships under the Labor Code. So a bit of uh, legislative history. Additionally, it underscores the imperative to institutionalize the dual training system, aiming to foster heightened engagement with enterprise-based training opportunities. Thus, the fol following the first EDCOM, the following were pursued. RA 1826, or the National Apprenticeship Act of 1957, was amended in Republic Act 7796, transferring the determination of apprenticeable occupations with the TESDA, and Republic Act 7686, or the Dual Training System Act, was passed in 1994. Now we're looking at uh, these two critical bills authored by uh, our commissioners uh, in EDCOM. Uh, the House counterpart was uh, approved and uh, filed by uh, Congressman Mark Go on the same subject matter. And we recognize in EDCOM the salient points of the bill, Senate Bill 363, as follows. First is the incorporation of the seven modalities of the EBT, use of an aptitude test for the selection of trainees by either the enterprise or TESDA, and the inclusion of a separability clause to ensure the independence of provisions and repealing clause, nullifying specific sections of the labor code related to apprenticeship. And to complement the filing of the bill, the EDCOM Standing Committee on Tibet and lifelong learning has been conducting consultations and site visits on enterprise-based training, a broad term for all forms of training conducted within the industry and enterprises. And uh, this is, uh, of course, within the personal knowledge of our two commissioners in EDCOM2. And I think the strength of this bill is that uh, um, it has the benefit and support of uh, first-hand access to data provided by our experts and stakeholders in our consultations within EDCOM. So the following are the matters that the Standing Committee on Tibet in, our, in EDCOM 2 that uh, we respectfully seek to resolve in the broader EBT policy <clears throat> under the Senate Bill 363. First is to ensure 
that the bill enables the participation of the SME, SM, MSMEs in the parameters and incentives provided in the bill. This is critical considering that according to PSA, 99.6% of enterprises are MSMEs as of January 2022. Second is to rationalize and consolidate all EBT policies in a way that reduces confusion on the ground, provides parameters and incentives that are tailor-fitted to the learners and industries catered to by different modalities as follows. The apprenticeship, not only apprenticeship but also learnership on the job training, practicum, work appreciation program, dual training system, and internship. These provisions are critical in the light of the following. Based on test the data, enterprise-based training remains to be the least populated modality in Tibet, Tibet accounting only for 9% of enrollment in 2022. In the NTE SDP 2018 to 2022, the agency stated the goal of enlarging the scope and impact of enterprise-based training to elevate it as a dominant delivery mode, as well as harmonizing EBT programs to avoid confusion among stakeholders. The target then was to increase EBT share from 4% 4, 4 in 2016 to 45% by 2022. Uh, we submitted our position paper, Mr. Chair, um, providing the uh, details in and comments in, in the provision in, in Senate Bill 363. But uh, as I end my manifestation, my opening statement, uh, Your Honors, I'd like to highlight also the importance of Senate Bill 363 in providing finally a legal framework on the enterprise-based training. Currently, it is a provision included in the Labor Code, and the Labor Code has been uh, there for a long time. It, is for, it was first... Uh, uh, decreed as uh, PD 442 uh, in 1974, and has gone through many amendments, uh, including the uh, including the creation of the TESDA. And uh, I'd like to highlight a specific point that the apprenticeship provision in the Labor Code focuses on the employment element or component of an EBT, which I think now with the focus on many modalities highlighting also the importance of the education component in such training conducted in the enterprises. I think it's high time really to provide a legal framework so that we are not limited, limited by, uh, by protection on employment. One specific example is that under the Labor Code, it says that apprenticeable occupations are those that require highly technical skills but are, are, um, are mastered or... Uh, learned within a six-month period. So in point limitation, but as we have seen in many studies, there may be other um, skills that may be learned or require longer longer period of time. And we think that this is one of the restrictions that should be given flexibility and should be uh, addressed uh, with the expertise of the test. So uh, for now, this will be our um, opening uh, statement, but uh, again, we submitted our position paper detailing our inputs on each section. Marami salamat po. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Attorney Estrada, especially in uh, reminding all of us that uh, not all disciplines are the same and uh, not all uh, industries are the same. Uh, let me state for the record that since I was the uh, chairman of the Senate Committee on Labor for quite some time, for six years, I remember the uh, labor unions would always uh, support this particular initiative, but with the uh, uh, reminder of what uh, Senator Tulfo made mention a while ago, that this could be used uh, to abuse yung ating uh, mga workers. On the other hand naman, yung uh, mga employ employers naman, they all are all, all very supportive of this, pero sinasabi din nila, how can we support this kung even the... The BIR is not aware of how to uh, give our uh, due benefits, no? especially yung uh, tax breaks. So another thing uh, I, I, I would uh, take as a, a very important uh, uh, reminder is that not all three disciplines are uh, the same. There are some that you have to really wait longer para ma-master at ma-learn mo. Uh, hindi talaga po pwede na lahat one cup uh, uh, fits all na sombrero. No? Kaya uh, yun yung uh, importante na naiintindihan natin lahat. So we'll uh, start with uh, Senator Gachalian, our uh, chairperson. 
if you wanted to start the ball rolling, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I, I saw the uh, presentation of um, uh, USEC Torres and uh, in one of her recommendations, um, uh, she recommended the definition of apprenticeship and dual training system. And I do agree. I do agree. In fact, I'll flash a slide that was presented to us by EDCOM uh, during our um, commissioner's meeting. And uh, in our country, there are several um, uh, modalities for enterprise-based training. Let me just flash it there. No? Uh, there's apprenticeship. There's dual training system. There's learnership. Uh, in fact, um, in senior high school, it's not here. Uh, there's work immersion program as well. No? So, and uh, if you go into the details, there's supervised industry learning, uh, and there there's a program on accelerated farm school establishment. No? So, in other words, I, I do agree. No, um, from a layman, there's so many programs being offered, and. Um, uh, the student or the potential learner or the potential uh, trainee, um, for them, it's quite confusing on w which one fits to to, to, to me no? and uh, which one will help me uh, be gainfully employed. So um, can, can uh, I ask uh, maybe you, Sectores, or maybe DGG uh, Villanueva, to um, give us a snapshot, no, uh, based on this slide, uh, what's the difference between an apprenticeship? What's the difference between dual training system? Um, and now, and, and then, how do we harmonize? What's, what's your suggestion to harmonize all of these uh, different programs? Some of them are created by law. Some of them are, like, for example, the dual training systems created by law, but some of them are just covered by the labor code, as what uh, Attorney Arab mentioned uh, earlier. So may I ask you, Sec. Torres or DDG Villanueva, uh, uh, what's the difference between all of these different programs? And what is your suggestion to harmonize it? No? Because we're now actually discussing the apprenticeship program, now EBT. How do, uh, and I do agree no, that we need to define it so that there's no uh, overlapping, but the, in your expert opinion, how do we define it? No? So two questions, the difference, and your suggestion on defining it. No? Thank you, Your Honor, for your the questions and very valid uh, points that you've raised. Actually, we had already a ready definition because we were recommending this in the apprenticeship bill, uh, but then they said we remove that, and including the dual training, we remove that because the focus will be solely apprenticeship and no dual training, no enterprise-based training in the apprenticeship bill. But we said that apprenticeship refers to any form of education and training that is governed by an apprenticeship agreement and enables an apprentice to acquire competencies required to train in an occupation with a training allowance consisting of both on the job and off the job training that leads to a recognized qualification. Apprenticeship training is basically very much high level skills as we see it, because it's, it's usually in many countries, not just six months. It usually ranges from six months to two years, depending on the kind of apprenticeable occupation. An apprenticeship program also depends on the defined apprenticeable occupations. And it is based on, it's up to the country and up to the Philippines to identify what are apprenticeable occupations, but usually they're high level skills. Dual training on the other hand, as we also were uh, proposing the definition, is a learning modality that provides in-school and in-plant training interventions following a mutually designed competency-based curriculum and outcome-based training plan. It can be a component of an apprenticeship program because from there you can draw up a comprehensive apprenticeship program if you have the foundation already from the very beginning. Dual training can be a foundation. Enterprise-based training can be a foundation for your 
full-fledged comprehensive apprenticeship program. So that's the difference. So most of the programs, the immersion, we also have the GIP, the government uh, internship program. We also have Job Start. And we said that these programs are also internship short term, which again can also be a stepping stone or a foundation to go to a high level scale. So it can be just very basic skill levels for these kinds of an internship uh, on the job training, which can combine on the job, off the job training, including uh, the theoretical component and a practicum component, which can be enterprise based. So those are the differences. And I consider apprenticeship as a high level kind of skills and which is really uh, comprehensive and it's actually based on the defined apprenticeable occupations or trade. Uh, previously in the labor code, uh, I was already then <laughs> working on the labor code and uh, they defined the apprenticeable occupations. That, that's absent now and we hope that we can do the same case to but define you... what are apprenticeable occupations. And this is usually agreed it can be a tripartite agreement also, government, ed, not only tripartite, government, industry, education, and uh, the enterprise itself. So, so that's your may, own. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, 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 if I may, no, I'm a, a little bit confused when you say apprentice, apprenticeable occupations, which I believe it's, is important, but who does the uh, listing of apprenticeable occupation? Right now, there is no such list, right? There's no such. And uh, isn't it apprenticeship is under the bigger enterprise-based training program? Because when you say enterprise-based training program, jan pumapaso, apprenticeship program, dual training system, learnership, uh, in-company training, etc. Isn't it uh, that is the case? Or kind of enterprise-based training, but it's really up to us how we would like to classify uh, apprenticeship. When you say apprenticeship, uh, enterprise-based training, they're of course all, all enterprise-based training, uh, whether it's short-term, long-term apprenticeship. But your, apprent your enterprise-based training can also be an apprenticeship program, if we so define, we should so yes, define but, it. But the thing is, when you don't have the list, of uh, uh, occupational, I mean, apprenticeable occupations. occupations we have to define and that. It's, it's list. very hard to yes. differentiate. Now, it's it's easier to differentiate the dual training system because the dual training system requires a, a school-based institution plus plus the uh, the the company the, the company the workplace area, right? So. Yun madali differentiate no than than the apprenticeship, uh, and then the learnership, and then uh, the uh, right in company training. Ano bang difference <laughs> uh, Learnership is really very basic uh, learning training program. It could be in, but but it, still, it's under it the. Be, it could be in the school in the or right? in the company. Yes. Or I mean, yes, to make it uh, more adept to what we're talking about right now, under the enter enter uh, enterprise based yes. education and training. That's so. What what what's the difference? If if you're in the enterprise based training and the uh, education of uh, learnership, what would it be? Yeah. But what I would really suggest is all these different types of learning or enterprise-based training be defined para claro because but that's the reason why we're asking Dole <laughs> how do you define it what do you propose in the three? yeah you made the definition of apprenticeship and dual training but what about learnership, the learnership and the very in company training, uh, very basic uh, training program and learnership can be also again a base or a, a component of an enterprise-based training or a company-based training a component which a component, means it could yes. be it could run for three months six months yeah. <laughs> or less than six less. months should it be less than six months to to make it appear that this is just a component usually learnerships are three months three months yes okay and then the in-company training uh -huh. so learnership again not just for our education could be in school or in oh, yes. company. Mm -hmm. Then the in-company training is part of learnership 
happening in the inside the the uh, workplace area is that correct okay sorry please continue sir. thank you thank you thank you for that uh intervention uh mr president uh, mr chairman and and all of these programs you said uh, torres are regulated or supervised by dole or tesla how is it how's how's the supervision of these programs um, GIP, I know it's Dole, yeah, and, right? Apprenticeship, yeah. uh, learnership, they're all under TESDA. TESDA. transferred to TESDA. Okay. Uh, so when they, when 1994. Occupation list. Dapa. Yeah. So uh, I saw in TESDA's presentation, yung uh, apprenticeship, learnership, EBT, yes, DTS. These are all under TESDA. So the only, the only uh enterprise based uh, modality which is gip oh. is under dole and also we have the job start okay ano which, naman job start? job start is a six month program which provides uh youth training for um three months three months three months the core employability training, for, they start with soft skills. And then after the soft skills, they're given uh, skill, uh, technical training. This is usually together with the company. So the company determines the kind of technical training a young person will have to undergo to be able to be absorbed in the enterprise. So that's, that's but there are uh, situations where the company already absorbs the the person even before the technical training is done and this is subsidized by the department of labor and employment the job start and we have current uh job start um, partnerships with private companies like aboitis and uh, labor with sm so it's really company based and it's short term short term chairman may I request from uh Tesda being the supervisor of all of these uh, programs, as well as uh, Dole, because I think they have some more programs under their department, to submit to us a detailed matrix of all of these programs. No? And who are the target clientele? At the end of the day, the target clientele, as what Senator Rafi mentioned, are the workforce or potential workforce. Uh, but it has to be very clear that uh, each program is nuanced in a way that the that that particular trainee uh, is is uh, going to start going to benefit from it, no? Going to benefit from it. No? So, in other words, all of these programs, the, the way I understand it, because we have so many programs, uh, each program is different because it has to cater to a very specific clientele or very specific trainee. But they have, we have to be very clear, no, on, on all of those because. As, as what we said earlier, there are several bills now talking about pretty much almost the same thing. You know? yeah. uh, so may we request from Tesla and from, from, from Dole to submit to us that, Mr. President? Please, uh, a matrix, siguro, and uh, considering that Dole is the uh, 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 chairman of the board of Tesla, siguro maganda na mabigyan tayo ng uh, matrix, di ba? Ano ba yung difference niyan? Because even if you look or, or, or made mention a while ago that uh, TESDA is on top of things in regulating dual training system and apprenticeship. Remember that this is all uh, regulated by uh, our labor code, our labor code laws. So, kayo din ang uh, implementors nito at uh, dapat talagang merong uh, coordination. Sige po. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, uh, Senator Rafi, please. Uh, with the indulgence of uh, Senator Wynn, uh, yung pinag-usapan kasi natin ngayon, Correct me if I'm wrong, yung apprenticeship is after na mag-graduate sa senior high. Is that right, uh, you sectores? After na mag-graduate sa senior high, mag-apprentice sila doon sa mga company selected or participating company. It, Not necessarily. it can be a choice. Uh, it can be a choice. My, my yes. suggestion yes. really, look uh, at this, uh, you say, kung pwede to. Ang suggestion kanina, sinabi ko, Dapat, haba nag-aaral sila sa senior high, maglaan ng ilang period, let's say six months before graduation, sila ay mag-apprentice 
sa isang company, chosen company, participating company, na pupunta sila doon and bibigyan silang konting allowance while training para after graduation, kukunin sila ng company na yun, magkakaroon sila ng guaranteed employment kasi sanay na sila doon sa patakaran sistema ng company na yun. They'll be hired as full-time employees na hindi na kailang pa i-train kasi yung training period nila, doon pa haba nag-aaral sila. So they'll receive full payment, at least minimum wage, and then at the same time, full benefits. How's that? Can be studied, Your Honor, and we can uh, discuss this also with DepEd. Isn't it? It's, it's also happening right now. I mean, for example, Monarch. I remember Monarch is uh, already committed to uh, conduct trainings for uh, senior high school students, and then they will... I'm not sure if, if that's happening right now. Is there anyone here who can uh, attest to that, Your Honor? Um, Your Honor, Monarch is also a partner of DASDA in this um, dual training system. Let me be more specific. Yung sinasabi ni Senator Rafi, senior high ka na, hindi ka pa gumagraduate, ah. you're still in senior high school, but you can actually do uh, or, or, or part of your program when you choose the TVL track or whatever track you choose, pwede ka nang dumiretso dun sa company and pwede kang mag-apprentice. Nagagawa na ba ngayon? Yes, ma'am, please. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, just uh, some information po. Uh, with regard to the requirement of our senior highs, uh, they, it is called the work immersion, which is equivalent to 80 hours. Just 80 hours of, uh, in, yes, of, in, of being Im immersed in the actual work. But uh, that's part of the requirement po for the completion of the senior high uh, curriculum. So when they're doing that, work immersion ang tawag, nasa senior high sila, di ba? Yes, po. Um, when they graduate, or, 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 or during the time what they, when they are doing work immersion, are they being, ano, uh, uh, are they getting allowances or anything? No. Not, I'm not so uh, sure, Your Honor, but uh, as far as I know, because my granddaughter also went through the program, and at the work immersion, there's no allowance being provided for no, But then after the work immersion, yung binabanggit ni Sen Rafi, nakakatuloy-tuloy ba sila na to be employed in that particular workplace where they are doing the work immersion? No, po. Uh, it's not always the case, Your Honor. Uh, Probably that would be uh, after, I mean, between the the agreement and the discretion of the. Employee. One last thing, no, before I, I I give it back to Senator Rafi. Your work immersion, how long is that? Eighty hours here. Eighty hours. Okay. Uh, director, instead of eighty hours, but di natin habaan. Sabi natin na maski wala ng allowance, with the guarantee na once nag-graduate na yung estudyante, nakatapos na siya doon sa work immersion, let's say 150 hours or 200 hours, then he or she is guaranteed employment in that company. And then that company will receive incentives from the government, tax break, etc. How's that? Para lang sa ganyan, kasi karamihan, ito nga yung kultura natin dito ngayon, Mr. Chair, uh, which we have to correct through legislation, perhaps, I don't know, Lahat ng mga uh, sa classified ads na naghahanap ng, ng uh, employee, palaging almost always must be college graduate. Dinidisregard na agad yung mga graduate ng senior high. Even parang clerk typist lang, receptionist lang, must be college graduate. This has to be changed. Na parang agad-agad discriminated agad itong mga graduates senior high. Yes, Your Honor, we understand the wisdom of the good senator, but this is within the purview of the Department of Education and not of TESDA. No, no, yeah, I know. Pero sabi ko nga, siguro, this is, uh, the, the way to change it is through legislation or, or maybe uh, pagkatapos ng legislation, magawa natin to the IRR. Kasi pansinin niyo po, kahit na sa Job Street, nakalagay doon, well, syempre, uh, uh, call yan ng company na nag nag hire ng, ng mga empleyado niya, sasabihin niyo kung anong gusto niya. Pero palagi na lang talaga, maski na yung typist lang, clerk typist, you must be a college graduate. Pag pumunta ka sa Amerika, 
There's no such thing na mas be a college graduate. Sinasabi ka diretso kung anong requirement, anong responsibilities, anong experience ang kailangan. Hindi na ka-specify doon kung kailangan mo college graduate o hindi. Maliban na lang kung ikaw engineer, architect, or nurse. Well, of course, nakalagay doon must be, must have license in nursing, etc. Di ba? Yun yung sinasabi ko. Kung mapapansin nyo po, uh, sa Amerika, uh, 4.5% lamang ang unemployment rate ng senior high. Dito sa atin, hindi ko alam kung sino ang totoo. Ayon sa Job Street, 57% ang employment for senior high graduates. Ang sabi ng DepEd, 10% lang. Alin po ang totoo? DepEd or Job Street? Honor, may I cl clarify yung 57.7%? It is awareness. Awareness. Awareness lang of enterprises for senior hiring okay. senior high. Thank you. So, hindi po siya so, employment so therefore, rate. 10% lang ang nakakapagtrabaho ng mga senior high after graduation. Wow! So, marami sa kanila, it's either hindi natatanggap, so dumidiretso sa college, or pupunta pa sa TESDA. So, bakit pa tayo merong K-12? What is the reason why we still have this K-12? Di ba? Para eh, after graduate nila sa senior high, magkakaroon sila employment, makakatulong sa kanilang family, etc., etc. Dito pala, eh, pag nag-K-12 ka, only 10% of you guys that will graduate this year will get a job. And what is the DepEd doing about this? Your Honor, may I share another set of information? Kasi last year, noong December 2022, we did a job fair for K-12. And um, may mga vacancies, about 9,000. And Marami pong, 116 were hired, basically as cashier, sales agent, and service crew. So what we're saying is, ito yung mga areas na pwede silang ma-hire. And that's, it, those are some areas which we can uh, enhance their competencies and skills kasi dun sila na-hire. Sa senior, mga senior high school ano to, graduates po, and job fair for senior high schools. And we intend to do the same this year. Again, to do a job fair for senior high para malaman, marami pong vacancies eh for senior high. Okay, yeah, ma'am. So, meron kayong ganong klaseng programa, which is very good. Po. So, meron kayong po for senior high job openings. Sabi nyo nga, 116 were hired. What happened to those that weren't hired? Iba po kasing qualifications kailangan college graduate. Okay. Yung dun sa vacancies. Kaya hindi sila na-hire. I thought you said... Yung program ninyo, yung uh, uh, naghahanap kayo ng mga applicants for Opo. high school, for, for uh, senior high graduates. Marami po for senior high senior high graduates, but meron ding mga up, mga vacancies na for college Why don't you come up with a program exclusive lamang dun sa mga senior high graduates? How's that? Pwede to encourage, po, to encourage companies na mag-hire ng mga senior high graduates na para... Okay. Eh, mapakinabangan naman, hindi naman masayang yung mga graduates na ito na magkakaroon ng trabaho diretso after graduation. It's, like I said, 10% uh, lamang ayon sa yung DepEd ang nagkakatrabaho. Whereas sa Amerika, kung titignan niyo po yung mga classified as Amerika, wala hong nakalagay doon, must be college graduate. Wala. Dito lang sa atin sa Pilipinas eh. Kahit na typist lang, kahit na receptionist lang, must be college graduate. Hindi nga. Kung ikaw senior high, eh, wala, matiturn off ka. So, ang ginagawa ng iba, magtetesda muna. O di kaya, uh, kaya sa koleyo. O di ba? Ano pang purpose na ba't pa tayong K-12? So, this is where the pedagogy should come in. So, is that okay, ma'am? Come up with a program na... Enhance our program for, ano, for yung, senior high. At saka yung sinasabi ni Director uh, na yung immersion program, eh, haba-habaan na lang yun. Yung gawin na lang natin para apprenticeship. Uh, for, let's say, three months or four months, five months, parang training yun sa isang company with the guarantee na after sa immersion program na niyan, di ba, uh, pag-graduate niya, pasok na siya doon, regular pay with benefits. And that company who accepted that uh, graduate from senior high, makakakuha ng incentive, government incentive, tax break, kung ano paman. Or siguro ang computation yan, if the BIR is here, eh, per per uh, employees na senior high na na-hire niya, meron siyang tax exemption doon. Merong rate na bibilangin. Siguro that's one thing that you should 
Talk also, meron po kaming yung government internship program na pwede din pong ma-training, ma-enhance yung skills ng ating mga senior high schools. Pwede sila din pumasok dito sa government. After graduation? Uh, after graduation po, para ano... No ma'am, ang gusto ko uh, na pag-graduate nila, may trabaho na sila. Kasi okay. karamihan sa mga magulang, um, nag-expect na anak, pag-graduate mo anak, tulungan mo naman itong kapatid mo, pag-graduate mo anak, gusto ko makabilitan ng ganito. Huwag na po yung magte-training, training, training pa rin sila. Parang, di ba? At saka isa pa kung mapapansin nyo, Mr. Chair, tingnan mo yung curriculum sa uh, K-12, yung sa mga senior high, Pagdating ng first year college, halos pareho lang yung mga subjects. Pareho lang halos. Kaya nga, dapat pagka-graduate nila sa senior high, matik, meron silang trabaho. Yun po yung gusto ko sana mangyari. Para, kumbaga, babaan natin percentage ng unemployed na mga graduate senior high, bawasan natin yung percentage na akit pa sila sa koleyo. Kasi yun naman purpose ng K-12. Kasi yung sinasabi natin, we have to compete globally. Of course, naintindihan ko yan. Pero the difference is, ibang kultura natin dito, ibang kultura sa ibang bansa. Dito kasi dinidiscriminate pag hindi ka graduate ng college. It's a fact because I'm not a graduate of college. I've been discriminated against many times just because wala akong diploma. Ganon dito sa atin sa Pilipinas, well, what we can do is nandiyan po kayo sa DepEd, nandiyan kayo sa TESDA, kung sino-sino mga otoridad dito, to change that kind of culture and help those people na hindi nakapag-graduate, especially yung sa senior high. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, Senator Sherry. But let me just put into the records, no? Uh, yung DepEd order kasi ng number 40, series of 2015, nakalagay dun yung 80 hours only. May maximum sila na 80 hours work immersion uh, only. So maybe we can uh, uh, look into it at uh, ipaalam sa DepEd anong basis nung uh, we wanted to find out Baka may basis sila na hindi natin alam. Let's, let's uh, look into it. Tapos pangalawa, yung binabanggit ni Sen. Rafi, uh, ma'am, kasi kayo na rin ang nagsabi na 57% yung awareness. Eh. So, wala namang violent reaction from the uh, enterprises to hire senior uh, uh, high school graduates. So, we wanted to find out ano yung dahilan. Kasi kung ito lang yung na-hire, Pero kasi sinabi nyo, kaya hindi sila na-hire dahil college graduate yung nire-require ng trabaho. Pero yung mga trabaho na hindi nire-require yung college graduate, ano ba yon May listahan ba tayo nun? Kasi kung may listahan tayo nun, tapos hindi rin na-hire yung senior high school graduate, there's something wrong with our program, di ba? Sige, uh, can I uh, uh, acknowledge before? Sige, uh, DDG. Uh, Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. I just would like to share with you this information, Mr. Chairman. Last Friday, our Secretary, um, Soharto Timangunda Dato, together with Madam DDG Rosana Ordaneta, has presented the embedment um, program or plan between TESDA and um, Department of Education for higher I mean, for senior high school. So we are now processing it, Mr. Chairman. And um, in fact, our secretary is also very excited for this, that all programs in senior high school will be embedded in the test, the um, training regulations. So that is also our response to the queries of the good Senator Rafi Tolfo in order to elevate the employability of senior high school graduates in the Philippines. Thank you, sir. We'll, we'll go to that uh, later. No? Kasi it's, it's, another, it's another story because when you are in the far-flung areas and you are implementing the TVL track, tapos yung mga schools doon, wala namang equipment. Yung mga schools doon ng TVL, wala namang trainer. Wala namang assessor, kahit na yung gusto ng bata, ganitong kurso, wala silang choice. So, doon din sila pupunta because they don't have a choice. And unfortunately, the, the track that they are taking, the courses that they are uh, uh, no choice sila na, na piliin, sasama lang din sila doon sa madaming pare-pareho silang graduate ng the same trade discipline. No? So, it's, a, it's another uh, challenge uh, for us. Sige, uh, Chairman Win, you're recognized? Well, well, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to um, join the conversation that uh, Senator Rafi mentioned. Uh, this is precisely uh, the issues that we were 
tackling when we were uh, talking about the proposed measure to overhaul or to reform the senior high school program in our country. And uh, the output of which is the Batang Magaling Law, which we, or Batang Magaling Bill, which we already sponsored in the floor. And there are three things. Now, the question of Senator Rafi, how come our senior high school graduates are not being hired? No? So there are three things that we found out in that uh, hearing. Number one, corporations have no buy-in in terms of the training and the work immersion program. On the ground, the corporations are clueless about work immersion programs and our senior high school. So we need to fuse them together on the ground. Uh, number two, the, and the chairman knows this very, very well. We have about a million senior high school students who are taking TechVoc. But after graduating senior high school, they don't have any certification. No, zero. No? So who will hire senior high, senior high school ka na wala ka pang certification? Who will hire you? No? So, uh, so this 2025, with the help of our good chairman, we already funded about half a billion pesos to certify, assess and certify our senior high school students. So they will end up with two documents. Number one, their diploma. And number two, their NC certification. No? And then number three, uh, the work immersion is really, the 80 hours is not enough. No? It's really just exposure. It's not even immersion, it's just exposure. No? So we also plan to uh, increase the number of hours in terms of uh, work immersion program. And uh, that's the reason I, I was, I was telling, was, um, Senator Rafi is already here. I was telling them, Senator Rafi, that during the deliberations of the Batang Magaling Bill, we, we address the issues of assessment and certification as well as the industry buy-in in terms of what to train our senior high schools. Because right now, on the ground, our senior high school, uh, they'll, 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 the senior high school students, they'll be given to a particular corporation or particular uh, company just for, the, just for compliance of work immersion. Walang, Sai sai do unsa gusto nilang uh, matuto, and that's why when the senior high school graduates, wala siyang trabaho. No? So that we plan to address that, um, Mr. Chairman, in that bill that we propose. But um, moreover, no, we, we, let's let's invite DepEd next time no? um, to shed light on this because there there might be some opportunities to build a continuum from senior high school to EBT. No, somehow, no. Uh, we'll find that continuum uh, later on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, b before I start asking questions, no, I I'd like to pound on that particular issue of uh, the challenge for the basic education, especially the senior uh, high school uh, TVL track. That a million would go to this track every single year. But then, if we could not afford to provide trainers, assessors, and the, this year's budget, this coming year's budget, the three of us here supported the, uh, the augmentation of funding for the certification of our senior high school. Kasi, uh, tama si Senator Wynn, kung ang promise ng senior high school, sabi din ni Senator Rafi, is when you graduate, you land jobs. How can you land jobs when the uh, companies or enterprises are looking for the national certification of TESDA, which has become the uh, passport for employment. Hindi naman ma-certify. Bakit? E wala din palang assessor. Wala rin pala, kulang din pala yung assessor. Until now, we have yet to put a number as to how many assessors we need to produce every single year. Um, malaking challenge siya, no? Um, let me start asking questions lang. Uh, let me show this, no? Yung sa table one, please. Can we, can we show yung uh, table one? Because based on uh, 2021 study on the uh, employment of uh, TVET graduates, as I mentioned earlier, three highest employability rates uh, among all training modes of TESDA are from enterprise-based education and uh, training modalities. Nandiyan yung apprenticeship, dual training system, and uh, in-company training and learnership. No? Now, if the employment rates of uh, enterprise-based education and training modalities are higher 
than institutional-based uh, uh, and community-based uh, trainings, why was TESDA unable to reach its targets? Kanina, binanggit ko yung target kasi for 2022, supposed to be from 2016 of 4% to 40%. Unfortunately, itong uh, next table uh, sa report ng TESDA sa enterprise base, lowest number of enrolled learners and graduates. Eh. So, minanggit natin, ito yung pinakamataas ang employment rate, ito yung pinaka-epektibo. Naniniwala tayong lahat na ang bata, ang learner, pag dinala doon sa workplace area, pinigyan ng pagkakataong matuto inside the workplace area using the same equipment, the same facilities, mas mabilis matuto. At kung mas mabilis matuto, mas madali um, para sa kumpanya na mag-hire ng mga nanggaling dito sa enterprise-based training nila kesa from outsider. So it appears that we are losing crucial opportunity here given the fact that enterprise-based education and training have high employment rates and yet they are the smallest in number among all delivery modes. So ang kanong ko po sa TESDA is your updated target kasi naging ambitious nga tayo no? from 4% to 40%. Uh, meron na tayo ngayon sa 2023 to 2028 na NTSDP. Eh, no? uh, ano na yung target natin ngayong taon for enterprise-based training? Maybe, you know? Your Honor. <laughs> yeah. uh, Esther na yung tinatanong ko, but uh, can you answer? Can answer? Sige po, sige po, sige. Um, kasi po may yung ating labor and employment plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually TESDA, TESDA participates in the deliberation okay. of the labor and employment plan. Meron tayong targets, outcomes, and outputs. Meron pong doon sa matrix, enterprise-based training implemented. Then indicator, number of graduates from enterprise-based training programs increase and number of enterprise-based programs offered. From a baseline of 79,000 for the number of graduates from enterprise-based training, ang target po na binigay sa LEP is 80,682, which will increase to 88,592. And then the number would, of... Would you be aware of the uh, TESDA national... Um, uh, Technical Education and Skills Development Plan. You're aware of that, okay? So I think it is more practical for this representation, for the Senate, to look into these numbers because every, uh, what, uh, five years, if I may, every five years, mayroong NTSDB para mas madali, di ba, yung computation at comparability can we just stick to that? May NTSDP ng 2018 to 2022. Ang target from 4% to 40%. We already agreed na ambitious yun at hindi nagawa. Malayong malayo. So ang next question, what would be now the NTSDP after 5 years, we come up with another NTSDP. Ano ngayon yung target natin? Yun lang naman po yung uh, tanong. Para lang hindi tayo malayo dun sa nakaraang 2018 to 2022 NTESDP target. Ano na ngayon sa 2023 to 2028? Sir, may I request that Ms. Andrade may be yeah, recognized? Please. Ay, uh, Linda, please. Okay. Good afternoon po, uh, Honorable Senators, Mr. Chair. Uh, with the permission of DDG Vidal and uh, Yusek Ami. Uh, the ones that uh, Yusek Ami is uh, mentioning a while ago is consistent with what uh, the targets of the NTSDP. The NTSDP is very supportive of the LEP, which is also aligned with the PDP. So for the, uh, for the number of uh, uh, graduates of the enterprise-based uh, programs from a baseline of 79,100. At the end of plan, Mr. Chair, uh, in 2028, we would have 88,592. So for the number of EBT programs offered from a baseline of 1,067 EBT-TVET programs, 
end of plan, we will have 1,193 for the number of enrollees. Sorry, sorry, sorry yes. Mama. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't want to, I don't want to uh, run out of patience here. I am just asking very simple question. Ang NTESDP, 2018 to 2022, from 4% ng enterprise-based education and training ay 4% tina-target maging 40% by 2022. Now, you came up with the NTSDP 2023 to 2028. Tinatanong ko ho, ano ngayon yung target sapagkat tayo po ay hindi nasiyahan na masyadong mataas yung tinarget nun at pag tinignan po natin tuloy-tuloy I will give you more tables here give me table 3 yung TVET providers natin conducting enterprise-based education and training by region ayan po pababa ng pababa ng pababa ng pababa ng pababa so tatanungin ko po ulit Ano po ang NTSDP target? Meron po ba o wala? Kasi kung wala, bakit wala? At tila baga parang hindi na ba natin priority ito? Perhaps that's the main reason why we are all here today because we feel that this is such a uh, forsaken uh, initiative. We wanted to make sure that we can do more, we can assess our programs, we can improve so that at the end of the day, Magbe-benefit dito yung mga learners, mga kababayan natin na papasok sa enterprise-based training program natin. Do we have or we don't have? Kasi dun sa 2022, yung huli, from 4% nga, ngayon ay 16.66% yung enrolled nung 2022. Ang gumraduate naman ay 15.51%. So, what is the target? Hindi naman natin... Sinasabing yung target nyo, magkukuha po ninyo, pero gusto natin malaman, may target po ba tayo ang TESDA? Mr. Chair, Please? yung pong na-mention ko kanina, hindi lang po siya naka-percentage as it was uh, before, but that is precisely what the target is, Mr. Chair. Yeah, can we do a percentage? Because we are uh, comparing apples to oranges here. We wanted apples to apples, orange to orange. We will do that, Mr. Chair. Can, can, can uh, you may... do that, please? Yeah, uh, so... Again, let me go back to my original point here. No? Why am I showing all of this? Ano yung efforts being implemented by the agency of our beloved TESDA to increase the number of EBT providers? Because look at this, pre-pandemic, ang taas, nag-pandemia, bumaba. Ngayon, hindi na nga tayo makabalik dun sa pre-pandemic figures E pababa pa ng pababa. Can you imagine a, a, a entire region of ARM? We only have four providers in the entire region. I mean, I'm sorry to say this, but if perhaps we have more of this, baka hindi, hindi nasama sa mga impactong terorista yung gumawa ng karumal-dumal na krimen na kahapon, di ba? I mean... So what are we doing uh, about this? Uh, we, do we have a target to, to, to increase the number of uh, providers? Say so in 2019, ayan, 983. In 2022, 830 na lang. Ngayong August, we only had 684. So, meron ba tayong ginagawa dito? Or... Uh, Kasi alam natin lahat, ito yung way to go eh. Lahat tayo naniniwala, kanina pa tayo nag-uusap dito, this is the way to go, we need to do this, sayang, yung pay opportunity, sayang, makakapagtrabaho yung mga kababayan, sayang, mabibigyan natin ng magandang hanap buhay yung ating mga kababayan at uh, maganda itong programa na ito. And yet, numbers don't lie. Ah, kasi may kailangan tayong palitan, we need to change in our current policies. Meron ba tayong kailangan gawin in incentivizing industries to offer more EBT programs? Help us! Mr. Chair, um, isa po sa mga strategy that we're doing in TESDA right now is to um, institutionalize yung ating tinatawag na 
enterprise um and oh my god how many trainers do we have how many uh trainers conduct enterprise based uh, education and training how has the guidelines improved yung guidelines in the past nag improve ba as we move forward from the 2016-2022 NTESDP, nag-improve ba yung guidelines? May pinalitan ba tayo doon para to encourage more participants? How many trainers do we have? How many trainers uh, since its issuance ang na-produce natin? Because we wanted to keep track. Diba? I think that's a basic question that we should all know about if we are representing TESDA and we come here. Eh. Mr. Chair, may I request that the certification office would be allowed to speak also? Please, please, please. Kasi baka kulang nga tayong trainers. Ano bang gagawin pa natin? Kulang na trainers, wala pang participants ng providers. Eh, we're doomed. Uh, while, while, while they're, we're waiting, yeah, so while, while they're getting uh, information and data, may I ask uh, DDG Villanueva, um, based on your analysis and uh, if we have conducted research, how come the EBT training is so low, ranging from 4% to 15% uh, uh, from the slide that I, I saw earlier? So how, what is the primary reason why uh, this program is so low. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. There are several reasons, Mr. Chair, why the EBT program um, is very low. I would like to share with you, Mr. Chair, the lack of industry to partner with the jurisdiction of TBIs that matches the qualification, more so living expenses of the trainees also are considered as... Um, difficulty and we need to partner with as many enterprises for the implant training aside from that mr chairman the scholarship covers only in school training portion of the dts program and with the limited scholarship allocation per sector per region this evenly distributed to tibet implementers being institutional based or enterprise based training which um, deterred their participation in dual training system and uh, there's a lot of requirements, Mr. Chairman, in the program registration. We need also to capacitate the EBT focals for the effective promotion of the EBT programs all over the country as well. And our companies as well, Mr. Chairman, are complaining because with this program, the disruption of regular operation of the enterprises are also affected. That's why we need to really advocate this um, program to enterprises. And most of all, Mr. Chairman, in our provinces, most of the enterprises belong to small size companies and have a problem providing with full training subsidy amounting to 75% of the minimum wage as required by the existing laws. And the training period as well, Mr. Chair, um, the trainers of the companies and human resources representatives feel that first three months of the training program is good enough to learn the basics 
the firm's representatives prepares a longer training program in the range of at least six to nine months, depending on the intricacies of skills required by the trainers. So those are some of the concerns, Mr. Chair, that we are facing in TESDA as we implement these EBT programs. The number one is uh, lack of industry, what? No, industry partner, Mr. Chairman, with uh, enterprises. Partners. And wh what is the reason why, I guess those are the reasons, no? The ones you enumerated yes, are the reasons. Sir. Okay, and then let, let's take one. No? For example, um, you mentioned earlier living expenses. Um, how, do, how do we address, because the law is one thing, no? but we plan to make it uh, attuned to all of, we plan to solve all of those problems that you mentioned. No? So like, for example, living expenses. No? Uh, what do you suggest in order to improve uh, or to solve that problem of living expenses? Um, we have to embed it in the law. Now, we all know that that's those you mentioned are the problems, but how do we solve each and every problem so that we will make the EBT successful? Now, we don't want to act a law that is not going to be successful. No? The law should solve all of those um, issues that you mentioned. So I just want to ask, very simple, lang, no? one, of the, one of the things that you mentioned is living expenses. What do you mean by that? No? The, the trainee will, what do you mean by living expenses? And what do you suggest to solve that issue of living expenses? For our trainers, Mr. trainees, Mr. Chair, to be relocated in the site of the company, um, we need to support them financially. Maybe that, that can also be part of the scholarship program. So aside from what they are getting, the 75% from the enterprises, there must also be an intervention coming from the government so that they will not stop from um, this program. Plant the, the trainers will be compensated. Um, Is that what you that propose? They, they must be provided as well, Mr. Chair, of their allowance as well. The trainer should be provided with allowance. Yes. Okay. And how much do you propose the allowance should be? And how much is the total request for that allowance? My request. Okay. How much is the total? Because we want to make this successful. Eh? And acting a law is yeah, the easy part. Making it successful is the challenging part. <laughs> no. So. Uh, how, how much do you propose and then how much is the total? Mr. Chair, um, we don't have the figure right now, but we would like to get back to you for the proposal. And ito na lang. Submit to us that, that the, the ones you mentioned. Yes, sir. Uh, the issues why uh, EBT or corporations are not joining the EBT program, but also give us solutions and also give us computations. Because if you say na let's allocate funds, how much do we need? No? Yes. How much do we need? Because we need to know also the universe of, or the, the magnitude of the funds that we will be allocating. Yes, sir. We will get back to you, sir, with the... Uh, um, Just submit to us to the committee we so we'll be enlightened. But these are basic questions that we need to, uh, in, to, to enrich the records so that uh, people will understand why we are uh, pushing for this bill. No? Yes, sir. Thank Mr. You. Chair? Okay, hindi pa niya nasasagot yung tanong kanina ni Senator Wynn, yung una niyang pinoint out na lack of industry who wants to partnership to the program. Pakisagot lang po bakit. And then sa dulo sinabi mo, sa mga probinsya, ang problem ang uh, karamihan ay mga SMS, MS, MSMEs. Ito yung mga company na nahihirapan mag-participate. Don't you know na 99.5% ng kumpanya sa buong Pilipinas ay 99.5% MSMEs. Um, thank you so much, Sam. So, Pakisagot lang po yung unang tanong ni Senator Wynn. Lack of industry who wants to, part to participate in the uh, partnership program. 
the reason of the industry's reluctance to participate on this, uh, Mr. Chairman. It is not clear what are the incentives that they will be getting from the well, government. Well, you must make it clear. Um, That's why you're there. Make it clear to these uh, companies. Come up with something. Talk to all stakeholders. Talk to DepEd. Talk to uh, any agencies na makatulong dito. Yes, Mr. Chair. Kasi hindi pala clear. So, hindi nyo na-explain sa kanila na mabuti. That's why you're there. That's your job. To make it clear to them. Yes, Mr. Chair. We had already... So, ano hindi clear sa kanila? Hindi nila klaro sa kanila, Mr. Chair. Kasi if they would apply to the Bureau of Internal Revenue, hindi rin alam ng BIR how to implement the... Then talk to the BIR. We had already um, initial talk with the BIR. So, ano nangyari po dun sa initial talks nyo with the um, BIR? The BIR, Mr. Chair, has promised to come up with um, revenue regulation that would address to the needs Talk to the of BIR, talk companies. to the Department of Finance. If you need our help here in the Senate, we will be more than happy to help you. Yes, Come Mr. up with Chair. a regulation how these uh, companies can uh, uh, take advantage of the incentives that we need to offer para sila mag-participate sa program. Right? As simple as that. I'll give an example. In the United States, in, in other countries, meron tinatawag na uh, exemption. So, kunyari, nag-donate uh, nag ka ng sasakyan, nag-donate ka ng damit, binabawas yun. Ilang sakyan dinonate mo? Bawas per sasakyan. Ilan yung uh, dependent mo? Per dependent, merong bawas sa tax. Ganon din yan, siguro dito sa atin. Kausapin nyo ng BIR. Siguro di ka ng kainti ng BIR. So, every, every time na sila mag-hire, ng graduate ng senior high. So, meron silang tax break doon. May exemption sila. Kung mag sila ng 50, hindi ang laki ng tax break nila. Ang laki ng exemption nila. Sige, maganda yun, uh, Senator Rafi. Tanungin natin, Desda. Sige, ano yung hindi clear sa mga enterprises? Sabi nyo kanina yung uh, tax break. Sige, let's go clearly. DTS, dual training system. Magkano ang tax breaks ng uh, insang enterprise? pag nag-implement sila ng DTS, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may. Please, please. Uh, Senator, uh, based on the DTS law po, nagbibigay po siya ng 50% tax deductions on the actual expenses paid by the DTS educational institutions po. Kasama din po dito yung tax exemptions sa donors tax at saka essential equipments, apparatus, and materials imported by the accredited DTS educational institutions, Mr. Chair. Okay. However, Sige po, go ahead. However, Mr. Chair, um, kung titignan po natin, Yung, nung ipinasa po, Mr. Chair, yung create law, nag-create po siya ng certain limitation pagdating po naman po sa apprenticeship um, tax benefits po. Kasi specifically mentioned under the create law, Mr. Chair, Section 9V, sinasabi po niya na ang makapag-avail lang ng 50% uh, tax deduction ay only public, technical, and vocational institutions. We clarified this po with the BIR and they said na um, very uh, uh, gita, restrictive po yung provision ng batas na ito. So yung ating mga enterprises po, Mr. Chair, mga companies na nag implement they don't fall under this category so hindi po sila makapag-avail ng tax exemption po, Mr. Chair. That's why, Mr. Chair, we, we are in support with the provisions of your bill, Section 18 po, nung binanggit niyo po, Mr. Chair, na may mga tax benefits na po doon na nakapaloob for DTS, apprenticeship, and all other in company training and programs. Yes, we wanted to clarify kasi kaya natin nilagay yun. But also, in CREATE, there is an additional uh, benefits yung corporate recovery and tax incentives for Enterprise Act deduction of half of the value of labor training expenses incurred for trainees enrolled in public education institutions and duly covered by an, an, an apprenticeship agreement. So meaning to say, uh, you know, as lawmakers here, kaming tatlo dito, nagpasa na tayo ng batas. May dual training system, meron ding uh, create. So, Ito ho ba, hindi pa rin clear, kasi binabanggit ka rin na not clear sa ating mga enterprises kung ano yung makukuha nila. Hindi pa rin clear po ito. 
Uh, I think it's not yet uh, clear, Mr. Chair, kasi nagtanong, nag-inquire po kami sa BIR kung ano yung exact interpretation ng provision, Mr. Chair. Kasi yung bin na binasa po natin kanina na section, Mr. Chair, naka-highlight din po kasi yun yung public, technical, and vocational institutions. So, yung system po ng DTS or yung apprenticeship program, sir, meron pong kasama po yan ng mga, in, um, mga companies. So, now, let, yeah, let me cut you there, no, sir. Attorney uh, Pascual. If you're saying, are you saying that uh, create law uh, actually is the reason why there is a low turnout of uh, enterprises uh, participation to enterprise-based training, education? Uh, I cannot say for sure, Mr. Chair, because we have not conducted a study regarding the problem. this. Yes, sir. Do you have any data that says this is the main reason why kokonte yung nagpa-participate na enterprises? May data po ba tayo? We don't have that specific data, but let me just share our experience, Mr. Chair, kasi pag nakakamiting po namin yung mga private industries, kasi um, aligned din po, Mr. Chair, ito but sa... these are data that I showed you. Data that says there are only a number of enterprises based na training program, enterprises participating in the enterprise-based training program that TESDA uh, supposed to be regulating. The data, the, the numbers don't lie. You can also uh, contest these numbers and say, mali yan, mataas na ngayon. Mali yan kasi pataas na ngayon. Tama yan, pero ito na yung ginagawa namin. Kaya tataas na yan. Ine-expect namin tataas na yan. Because the data is very clear, pababa ng pababa itong uh, uh, participation. So, yung kaninang katanungan lang, meron tayong mga guidelines, meron tayong mga ginagawa. We wanted to find out as legislators, ano yung ginagawa ninyo na effective, ilagay pa rin natin sa batas. Merong effective, O defective, yung sa create ba, defective ba, kumbinsihin nyo kami na defective at nakasama talaga. Kasi if we do something about it now and say, oh yan, yung sa create, kailangan tanggalin ito, ganito, ganyan. Pero wala naman tayong basis. So, how can we do that, di ba? So, yun yung kailangan namin as legislators. Eh. Uh, Senator Joel, um, tama po kayo, Mr. Chair, we will not contest the data na bumababa nga po talaga yung number ng mga uh, graduates, mga enrollees, and implementers. However, TESDA, the part of TESDA po, for example, this year we, all, we uh, tried to meet with the BIR to clarify certain issues and at the same time we came up with an agreement po to submit certain documentations in order for them to come up with a revenue regulation that would address some of the concerns, especially po sa DTS. Uh, moreover, we conducted um, several, uh, no, sir, uh, Mr. Chair, cap capability building sa aming regional uh, offices and focals um, highlighting po the benefits of the uh, different uh, programs. And at the same time, Mr. Chair, when it comes po sa, ano, sa um, industry board po natin, yan po yung ginagawa namin, Mr. Chair, na ini-infuse namin uh, with our, uh, during our discussion yung importance or yung effect, impact ng uh, enterprise-based uh, trainings natin in hopes po na mahikayat ang ating mga industriya na mag-provide ng mga programs po na EBT po, Mr. Chair. Yes, thank you for that. But if you look at the, let me show table four. You show the, ta the table, please. We are all in agreement, TESDA and everyone else here inside this room, are in agreement that this is the way to go. Importante ang enterprise-based uh, education and training, etc. But if you look at this table, your honors, pababa rin ang pababa yung enrolled eh, na number of students. From 2018, mo, 7,000 dati. Ngayon, 2,000 na lang. So, meron talagang problema. May problema din sa nagpapatupad. May problema din sa promotion. Yung kaninang binabanggit ni uh, DDG, Bidal, may mga enterprises na hindi pa rin alam ito. Kailan nila malalaman kaya? Kailangan ba mag-privilege speech kaming tatlo dito na sabihin namin na calling all enterprises na mag-
Conduct kayo ng ganito kasi win-win sa inyo ito, etc. So ito, pababa pa rin po ng pababa. Now, if you look at another table, alam nyo kami dito sa Senado, nag-aaral kami bago mag-hearing eh. Another table, uh, ito, in terms of monitoring ng TESDA, no? ito, tingnan nyo, ang gulo. Example, in 2022, the number of enterprise-based education and training enrollees and graduates based on TESDA's annual report, eh magkaiba. Doon sa 2022, TESDA annual TVET statistics by almost half. Nalahati po ito eh. So again, kung bibigyan nyo kami ng ganitong mga tables, ganitong mga figures, eh ano ba talaga yung TESDA's process in monitoring its number of trainees? Kung mali, ang laki ho ng difference. Can you, can you clarify on this? Which is which? Anyone can answer, please. Ate Babes. Uh, Mr. Chair, may we provide uh, uh, the data on this and uh, on your question, which is switch in a in, uh, later date, Mr. Chair? Okay. Wala namang kaming choice. Um, anyway, I don't know what else to say. Your Honors, I'm sorry. I came from Tesla. I, 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 I feel so bad. We're saying we need to do this. We are all in belief that ito yung tama. This is the way to go. But what the hell are we doing in the past years? We can't even confirm or deny these figures. My God. Lahat tayo in agreement. Tama ito. Gusto natin gawin. Pero... Eh, kung may pasa din pala natin to, kung kayo din ang mag implement ganun din pala. Dual training system, gano'ng nakatagal yung batas na yan? Tagal na yan eh. Hanggang ngayon, hindi pa rin alam ng mga enterprises. I don't know what else to say. Please give us na lang yung mga kailangan namin. I, I can go on and on asking questions, but these are all basic questions. If I can go on and on to ask these questions, edi eh, wala rin. I'm sure hindi rin masasagot. I'll give the floor to uh, Chairman. We want to see this bill successful. No, uh, like I said, no, passing the bill is the easiest part. Making this successful is another question. So we need the cooperation of TESDA in particular because in the bill you're the implementing agency and the rest of the agencies uh, on how come the EBT program is not uh getting the enrollment that it should be you know, only four to fifteen percent so th there's a problem you know? we're all saying that apprenticeship is is important we're all saying that uh apprenticeship is uh vital to creating employment and also arming our workforce with the necessary skills but the ebt is not getting any attention so there's a problem so we want the agencies, binigyan nyo kami ng list of issues, but also give us a list of solutions. No? Don't just throw the problems to us. Throw us, give us the solutions. If there are also corresponding budgetary requirements, give us the budgetary requirements as well no? so that we can incorporate that in the bill. Uh, the bill is already uh, quite comprehensive, but we need to make sure that it's successful. No? So that's why we need uh, the cooperation of TESDA and also DOLE to give us a comprehensive report on how to make this successful and also the basic data. No? Yung mga tinatanong ni chairman are very elementary, very basic data. We need to put that into the records because if you tell us we need money, we also need to make we also need to compute how many graduates are we looking at how many corporations are we looking at how many trainers are we looking at sabi nga ni chairman kulang tayo sa trainers baka maglalagay naman tayo ng budget wala naman tayong trainers the reason if you remember the budget the initial the initial amounts that we all agreed to put to train our senior our senior high school is 1.5 but when the chairman raised the wala naman assessors, kahit maglagay kami 10 billion, wala naman assessors, wala rin. Wala rin. That's why we reduced it to 400 million. No? So, 
those are the things that you need to think about and give the committee because you have the information, you have the data. You know? So make sure that uh, in the next hearing, Mr. Chairman, kung may next hearing, is to come here armed with data, information, and suggestions, not only problems. No? Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Chair. Please, Senator Rafi. Uh, you did mention a while ago, isa sa mga reason, but uh, uh, there is a lack of uh, uh, participation uh, dun sa program uh, ng mga industry ay meron mga companies nagko-complain Pakibanggit niyo ulit sa amin, ano po yung mga complaints usually ng mga companies na ay mag-participate sa program ninyo? What are usually the complaints? Sir, uh, Mr. Chair, companies are complaining with the disruption of the regular operation of the enterprises. Disruption? Yes, sir. Example of this is the Philippine Contractors Association. So Contractor? Yes, sir. Anong kinalaman ng contractor sa isang company, halimbawa, MSMEs, na eh, tatanggap ng uh, graduates mula sa, sa inyo o mula sa programa ninyo? It's pa the, it's the ano, Mr. Chair, it's the consolidated concern of the Philippine Contractors Association that once they um, bring in... Um, Sorry, sir. Or... Anong kinalaman ng kontrakto sa isang company na lalagyan nyo po ng mga graduate ninyo after makapag-train sa inyo. Okay? Anong kinalaman ng Association of Contractors? Sila ba ang uh, nagde-decide how the companies are going to be run? It's an association of um, these companies, Mr. Chairman. I know, I know. There's an association of contractors. Akala ko kasi you're talking about DPWH, kailang may mga contractor. Uh, we're talking different here. I'm talking about companies, MSMEs, malilit na kumpanya, na papasok, galing sa programa ninyo, papasok doon, magkaroon ng trabaho. Ngayon, ang sinasabi mo, magkakaroon ng disruption. How can that be a disruption? These people that na graduate from your program, you put them in that company so that they'll have a job. And you said the company is complaining, that are complaining because it will be a disruption based on the standards set forth by the Association of Contractors. Anong kinalaman ng mga contractors? Ang layo po mga sagot niyo, sir. Sir. These are the companies. This is the reason kung bakit di kayo successful kasi ang laing mga isip nyo. Siguro next time, sir, dalhin nyo na dito yung BIR at by that time you come back kung meron pang next hearing, nakapag-usap ko ng BIR and then you tell us ano napag-usapan ninyo. And, and then don't mention about contractors. Are, are you a contractor from the DBWH? No, ano ka, Mr. Triple Chairman, A? No, contractor? No? Oh. <laughs> bakit hindi yung contractor? Isa pa. I'll tell you this, Mr. Chair. Uh, nung last hearing natin, correct me if I'm wrong, may sinabi ka, pinagmalaki niyo pa kayo dyan sa TESDA na uh, mataas ang, ang uh, employment rate. However, marami sa kanila underpaid. Kaya nga nagalit ako doon. Below minimum? Anong kinagawa niyo? Ba't yung pinapayagan na ito mga graduate ng TESDA na pinunduhan ng gobyerno para makagraduate, matuto at Pag nag-graduate, magkaroon ng ma-decent ma and trabaho, at least man na minimum. And yet, inamin mo na marami sa kanila below minimum. Oh, baka sabi mo, eh kasi yung contractor nagsabi, eh below minimum sila. Contractor ulit ang gawin natin reason. Sir, may problema kayo. You came here not ready, sabi nga ni uh, Senator Chairman dito, si Senator Joel. We prepared for this. Unfortunately, you guys are not prepared. Because the next hearing, dapat magprepara na kayo, ano, sir? Mr. Chair, salamat po. My la last question. Uh, Before you ask the yes. question, to put on record, no? Madami ho sa loob ng conference room na ito, together with Senator Gachelian, myself, Attorney Estrada, some of our staff here, present during the Education Commission quarterly meeting, the Contractors Association of the Philippines were there, presented into the body, 
a uh, list of uh, programs that they are expecting from the education sector, particularly from TESDA, that they are in full support of enterprise-based training program. That's why we are all so shocked to hear that uh, they are complaining and saying uh, it's an interruption of their operations. I, I, we don't agree with it because, you know, records will bail me out. Again, so many personalities involved here in Education Commission 2 were all present last Friday. Is it Friday? Thursday. Thursday. Last Thursday. And they were saying that uh, even test the board is um, operating very, very slow, tackling training regulations with a maximum of four training regulations per meeting only. And I even asked them, why, wh what is happening? Why is it that they can only accommodate only four training regulations per meeting? There is a somehow prescribed ceiling as to how many training regulations will be tackled. Again, coming from TESDA, this is so disappointing, and for me, it's unacceptable. Uh, I hope we can do something about it. Uh, also, again, if you talk to the Philippine Constructions Association, they were saying they wanted this. They need this. This is a win-win initiative for the construct construction uh, industry. And uh, in a way... This is a great uh, opportunity for them to help our learners and the education sector. Just to put that on record, Chairman Win, please. Lastly, Mr. Chairman, and I do attest that the president of the Contractors Association, the Philippines, uh, he was actually the one no, presenting to the body about their um, uh, um, their advocacy on um, enterprise-based training. My last question is on Section 13, uh, DDG uh, Villanueva. Uh, I notice here that there's a committee to be created, and uh, part of the responsibility is monitoring the program, settling differences between management and trainees, and recommending measures for effective program implementation. From, from your experience, what are the differences? The experience of TESDA. What do you mean by settling of differences? Any anyone from TESDA? Mr. Chair, if I may, Paul. Please, please, Attorney. Okay. Um, uh, just an example, Mr. Chair. For example, uh, kung ang bata po ay na admit sa isang apprenticeship program na implement ng isang industriya, at ang bata ay gusto niyang terminate po yung agreement for whatever reasons. Yung may committee po na magtitingin kung ano yung reason bakit kaya hindi maging successful ang pagpatuloy ng bata para just in case po na minor naman po yung kadahilanan na pwedeng masettle ng committee ay mapag-ayos po yung bata at saka yung industriya para sa ganun ay mapagpatuloy ng bata at matapos niya po ang kanyang programa, Mr. Chair. Existing mechanism right now? Yes, Mr. Chair. Under uh, the EBT program? Particularly the apprenticeship and the DTS programs, Mr. Chair. Apprenticeship and DTS program. And uh, from your experience, how many cases of uh, uh, settling of differences are there? No, just just give us an, uh, no, just give us a, a ballpark figure. Is it um, does it take up a major part of the committee's work? My apologies, Mr. Chair, but as of the moment, I don't have yeah, the record. Submit to us na submit. No, the, the reason why I'm asking is, dapat in training, there's no difference. Eh. We, you know, it's, a, it's training. No? It's good for you, and you get paid for it. So I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering. I just want to be enlightened. What are the differences? No? Um, I, I think that the, the ones you're pointing out is more or less the arrangement between the two. Uh, personalities. No? Yes, for Mr. Chair. And just in case, for Mr. Chair, kasi may training agreement po sila. Yes, correct. May training agreement. Possible po kasi na yung bata, 
pinapagtrabaho siya ng something outside of the training plan. So, okay. magkakaroon po ngayon ng complaints or problem regarding these two. So, isisettle po ng committee kung saan po nagkaroon ng lapses, kung tama po ba ang allegation ng bata or ta ta tama po ba na may paglabag din sa na naging kasunduan po nila. So, ito pong committee ang uh, mag ensure po na maayos po yung ano nila. Just in case na hindi naman po talaga maayos, papasok po. So long na training po ang pag-usapan, pwede na pan pong may appeal, may appeal kay TESDA kung ano man yung resolution ng committee. It's just uh, for the next hearing, just submit to us some numbers so that we'll be, we'll have a good flavor of uh, how this committee and how the TESDA board resolves this type of uh, uh, issues. So thank well, you, Mr. Chairman. Senator. Thank you just to follow it up, no? For example, sa dual training system, merong training plan eh. So, pag hindi nila nagampanan yung training, uh, what is uh, embedded doon sa training plan, doon pumapasok yung committee. Is that correct? Yes po, Mr. Chair. And lalo na po kung may uh, instances ng abuses, Mr. Chair, kasi sinisigurado po natin as much as possible na yung ating mga trainees ay hindi sila uh, ma-abuse kasi nga po, trainees po sila, hindi sila empleyado. And that's the exactly. standard test. Uh, they are uh, uh, expected, they should not, uh, the, the enterprises should not expect the trainees to perform or to uh, uh, to uh, work like a regular worker, di ba? Um, so that is the case na papasok yung committee na sinasabi mo. I think it's very important yung tinatanong ni Senator Getchelia na how many times we have experienced itong, uh, you know, eh, eh, siguro sa isang taon, how many times pumapasok yung committee, ano yung universe natin para doon lang sa isasubmit, no? bigay, bigay sa atin para maintindihan namin gusto. But one, another thing is doon sa apprenticeship program, you don't have a list of apprenticeable occupations. We have actually, Mr. Chair. You have? Yes. We will also submit a copy. Oh, so, meron na kayo. Mm -hmm. So, kung meron na kayo, madali na po i-figure out, for example, if an occupation can actually last longer than a regular six months. Diba na? Pwede ka na, oh, yan. For example, Ano yung po pwedeng sabihin mo na apprenticeable occupation na hindi kakayanin ng six months, pwede ka nang maging regular? ba? Meron yon for sure. Uh, exactly, Mr. Chair. Meron pong ganung uh, scenario. Kaya, um, base po sa apprenticeship law po natin, uh, Mr. Chair, hindi kasi pwedeng lumagpas ng six months. So, ang ginagawa po dyan... Kung... You also agree with me na there are some apprenticeable occupations na hindi ka kayanin ng six months. Definitely, Mr. Thank Chair. You. Thank you. Uh, siguro yun na lang, no? Masubmit na lang po. But curious na lang, one last. How many yung list, how, how many yung listing ninyo? Kasi even dole, nakita ko yung mukha ninyo, nagulat kayo na meron silang list na apprenticeable occupations. Ilan yun? Kasi yung dole, pati sila nagulat eh. Uh, actually, Mr. Chair, yung ginagamit po namin, uh, list of apprenticeable uh, occupations, uh, galing po sa listahan din po ng Dole. Uy, galing pala sa inyo, Dole, ha? So, hindi daw po uh, sa Dole. At least, nalaman yung hindi sa Dole. <laughs> Opo, pero, but, uh, my apologies po, ma'am, if that is the case, because uh, I'm just reading what is... Opo. Um, base po, sir, uh, Senator... Uh, uh, Based on this list, it's 141 po. 141? Yes po. Diyan sa 141 na list na yan, ilan yung more than 6 months? More than 6 months to 2 years, tingin mo na magpo-fall under. Do you have that or wala? Uh, I still have to compute, Mr. Chair, kasi yes, the indicated lang, lang po is yung number of uh, total hours, yeah. Mr. Chair. Hintayin na lang namin. But when was this ano, official list? Uh, came about itong apprenticeable occupations na ikinagulat din ng dole na meron kayo kailan kaya kailan huling kailan yan lumabas baka mamaya attorney ikaw lang ang may alam niyan sila DDG Bidal ba alam niya <laughs> okay we will just provide Mr. Chair yung uh, list po, na pinurwa po Your Honor, can I yeah. respond yes respond uh, uh, currently, uh, currently 
all the training regulations have been classified as apprenticeable occupations by TESDA. So, ang nangyari, Teka lang. oh, yun po, yun ang sabi sa amin ng TESDA. So, kaya sabi namin, if we finally have the apprenticeship law, then we should define clearly what are apprenticeable occupations. Ang unang itatanong ko sa floor kay Senator Jingo dyan sa apprenticeship. Anyway, so, ibig sabihin lahat ng training regulation, yun lang yung sinabi nyo? Na apprenticeable. Yes, Mr. Chair, as a uh, with a current situation, Mr. Chair, kaya gusto mo namin it's siyang... It's not. It's not the apprenticeable occupation. We've been talking about this kanina. So, wala pa. Wala pa. Anyway, sige, Attorney Era, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Senator. Just want to share some... <laughs> Just wanted to share some insights based on our review. And uh, this opportunity to check with the agencies kung tama. Kasi po yung batas... Nung naipasa yung TESDA Act, yung Apprenticeable Occupations, determination yun, has been transferred to TESDA, formerly from DOLE. But the, but the terms and conditions of Apprenticeship... Please, please uh, order, please, please. Later na kayo mag-usap. Sorry. We have, uh, please. Yeah. Salamat po. But the terms and conditions of the Apprenticeship Program remains with the Labor Code. In fact, sa Labor Code, Nasa title siya ng labor code on training and employment. So, apprenticeship is a mode of employment. Kaya po, merong restriction na six months eh. Kasi after that, hindi pwede. Otherwise, ma-circumvent po yung security of tenure. So, we have two policies now. Uh, one agency that determines apprenticeship occupations through training regulations po. Yung sinasabi nila kung yun man yun. But the terms and conditions of apprenticeship as an employment, as a dole po eh. So, magkahiwalay po yun. Now, yung gusto ko lang pong i-clarify yung kanina about apprenticeship and EBT. Uh, we think that what the bill now tries to address is the framework for, an, for EBT. Kasi hindi po lahat ng enterprise-based training are based on employment or modality. Katulad po ng mga work, yung work immersion program ng, ng senior high school. The purpose is really to, to complete the senior high school program. Uh, isa lang po yung objective na maabsorb sila sa work after. So I think uh, if we put them under one governance, uh, mas magkakaroon po ng better collaboration yung test that DepEd eh. So right now, hindi po malinaw based on our researches and consultations. Ilan ba yung nasa TBL track ang enterprise-based? And uh, ilan ba dong, uh, doon ang uh, nag-conform uh, uh, with, the, with the training regulations? Magka-separate po yung T TVL ng DepEd at yung, yung, uh, yung mga TVET programs po ng TESDA. So I think yun po ang ma-address ito. Eh. So yun po yung mga overlaps. Marami po kami observations talaga, overlaps on policy, which I think if we address that, would, would help a lot. But I think some implementation problems would, would, will remain because <laughs> this is on the presumption that uh, the implementation problems are, work, are, are addressed. Salamat po. Before we close, you're, you're uh, on, you know, just to put this on record, this is the third hearing pala. Third hearing na to eh. Uh, yung first two hearings was conducted by the chair, Senator mm -hmm. Chis Escudero, and uh, uh, gusto lang natin na mapabilisan itong uh, ginagawa natin. If there's none, no, just, just to thank all of you, uh, truly we cannot go to business as usual if we are aiming to change the uh, educational landscape. The NTESDP 2028, 18-22, na pinag-usapan natin, gusto natin maayos yung susunod na five years. Nakakalungkot nga po na hindi natin naabot itong uh, tinarget natin. But if there's one lesson that we have to learn from this is, if at first we do not succeed, let us find out why. Alamin po natin kung ano yung mga gumagana, ano yung hindi gumagana. Pag-isipan natin kung ano yung mga kailangan nating baguhin sa ating sistema Buksan natin yung dialogo sa mga industriya, sa ating mga iba't ibang ahensya ng pamahalaan, sa mga trainees. And uh, we take note of the comments of our colleagues from TESDA, DOLE, as to the concepts that can be taken into consideration in the present bill. We also wish to undertake a few um, um, suggestions 
like yung review of the availment of incentives for industry partners and institutions. Again, we'd like to thank uh, Edcom family. It is, uh, again, the duty of the Senate as mandated by our Constitution to promote a sustained development of a reservoir of national talents, including high-level technical manpower, skilled workers, and craftsmen in all fields. Uh, with the growing relevance of uh, enterprise-based education and training amidst the disruptions caused by various labor trends and developments, it is imperative that the state, together with our stakeholders, work together to realize our vision of a more robust and enabling environment for scaling, upscaling, and rescaling opportunities. We will uh, uh, adjourn the uh, hearing. Uh, we'll talk about it among ourselves in the Senate, whether or not we will convene a technical working group or we come up with another hearing for the fourth time. But again, we are expecting your uh, commitments na for the submission of uh, the data that we are asking. So we uh, adjourn this hearing and again, thank all of you for your time today. Thank you very much. God bless us all.